everyone. Welcome to Community Connection on Location. I'm Liz Brown Swanson here at what is probably the most talked about location right now on the peninsula. I am at the former Marine Land site where Terranea is all coming together, a first class world resort that's being built day in and day out. You can see the crews behind me. We are going to give you a behind the scenes look of Terranea and what will be here for our community. The excitement is building as our community watches Terranea built from the ground up. For 10 years, the team at Low Enterprises has planned this development, and they promise this half billion dollar project will be a resort community like no other. Lowe's, a Los Angeles-based entity, has developed magnificent resort communities all over the country. But it's here on the peninsula that they want to bring their vision of sea, nature, history, and architecture together. The 102-acre seaside escape will feature luxurious amenities for the public to enjoy. There's a hotel, spa, golf, gourmet restaurants, beautiful trails, and a secluded beach. Already, more than half of the villas and casitas for sale are under agreement. These two to four million dollar properties are attracting buyers interested in full ownership with partial occupancy. And they're interested in the lifestyle Terranea plans to offer. And with plans to open next summer, the Terranea team is working around the clock. From the father-son team, Bob and Rob Lowe, to the resorts director, Terry Hack, and the director of real estate, Dan Cook. This team is proud to be part of the peninsula and ready for the challenges ahead. Now, this 102-acre parcel, one of the best ways to really get a feel for it is to get a tour. And I'm lucky I have a tour guide here, Dan Cook. You, you're going to take us along the property? Absolutely. It's an adventure every day. Are you ready? I'm ready for the adventure. So here we go. Let's go. Of course, we're just uh, coming through the entrance here. This is the entrance. Uh, off to the right, the villas. And you can see they're in the varying stages of development. You know, people in the, the hill come by, they always comment about how quickly this resort is coming up out of the ground. Our general contractor, Turner, doing an incredible job. And right here, a good example of seeing the different steps of the construction process for the villas. In the foreground, the underground being done, the uh, electrical and plumbing being set, the digging out for the footings that will be poured soon. In the far ground, you can see where they're actually pouring the foundation. And then to the left of that, a foundation that's finished. And of course, all of the other villas that are under construction have the framing up and are getting closer to completion. The villas are two and three bedrooms. They uh, range from 1,850 to 2,800 square feet. These are really wonderful family compounds. Great for extended families to get together. You know, Liz, a lot of our owners live less than a mile away. They could walk to Terranea Resort. Terranea, as, as our residents and members of the public that drive along our coastline, uh, see every day is materially uh, increasing in terms of a transformation from what was the old gutted marine land site to now an emergent new destination resort, which will have a tremendous amount of amenities for our community. Um, when I was on site with Bob Lowe and uh, Mayor Doug Stern uh, a couple weeks ago, you just don't get a feel of the magnificence of that location until you're on site. And we were in the uh, structure itself, and I can only tell the public and, and members of uh, residents of our community to just wait until this opens next year. Be because when it opens, it is going to blow people away. Uh, the location, the views, uh, the trails, um, the restaurants, the uh, habitat restoration, uh, world-class spa, open to the public, uh, a nine-hole executive golf course and teaching golf academy, um, potential uh, uh, um, access to the beach, uh, perhaps a restored beach. Um, it's just going to be fabulous. It's going to be one of the cornerstones of this uh, peninsula. Well, the, the, the process of naming a hotel is one of the most controversial things we do <laughs> internally. At every name that you come up with, somebody has something about it they don't like. So it's often easier to make up a name, and Terranea kind of comes from two things. Terra, which is Earth, and it, um, it, it, the site we have here, there's no better piece of Earth anywhere in Southern California. So we thought that was a great term to use. And then the term Mediterranean. Uh, we're in this special, unique Mediterranean climate that we have here. 
much of the architecture around the peninsula is of the Mediterranean vernacular and just like we're doing here. So that, that's how we came up with it. Yeah, all right. Was it your idea? <laughs> <laughs> no, we unfortunately had to hire an expensive consultant to do that. What are some of the challenges you're facing right here, do you see, in the future as you put this all together? Well, the, the first challenge w w was to do a project that was worthy of the site. I mean, that was both a challenge and an opportunity. So that was number one. Uh, obviously, we had many groups uh, on the peninsula that were interested in what we were doing. Uh, we developed a very good relationship with the city council. They're very far uh, outward looking folks and so we began to work well with them, work with the Coastal Commission, all of which to come up with a project that was acceptable to a broad range of special interest groups. Then, then as you know we've been building this project in a high cost environment and so uh, building the kind of quality project we wanted and maintain realistic costs have also been a challenge. First of all, Terranea is another project that's long overdue. I mean, it, it should be there. I know people would say, well, why don't you save it for open space? You can't. We didn't have the funds to be able to, to acquire that. But what, what's happened here is that we have, indeed, what has turned out to be a, um, a quality developer um, working with us, working with the community, being sensitive about environmental issues, making access spots, working with um, uh, staff. Um, we have seen that. It is nice to hear for a construction project that is uh, a little bit ahead of schedule, that it's um, within their budget, which is not insignificant, and uh, that they're fulfilling all of the uh, all of the commitments that they made for the obligations for opening up space, um, for planning of um, 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 uh, plant plants that are indigenous to the area. So, I mean, there's a lot of commitment here. Well, Terranea is making enormous progress, uh, and I think uh, people are, you know, driving by, beginning just to see what it's going to involve. It's, it's going to be a major resort, but I think it's also going to blend in very well with the rest of the community, and I think that people are going to be pleased with the way it's going to look once it's done. Right now, it's just construction, but uh, it will be a wonderful project. I live right across the street, so we've seen the development from the ground up. And when we saw the plans, it, it seemed fine. It seemed a little dense initially, but now that it's moving along and once the shrubbery's in and all the green, the, the greenery is planted, I think it's going to be a great attribute for the community. I know I read a few articles in the newspaper that it's going to have an amphitheater, a walking trails, restaurants, which I think will really boost our community. The intent of Terranea is to really be part of this community. We are so proud to come into such a vibrant, involved, and caring community. And we intend to earn the respect of this community. And most of all, we're going to create some memories. All right, as we continue on our journey to explore the landscape here at Terranea, we just passed by the villas. How many workers do you have here on location, probably? Well, it varies from day to day, you know, around 500, probably the average on site. Um, the villas, you were asking me, uh, pointed beautifully. I mean, just luxurious appointments. The fit and finish will be beautiful. They'll have outdoor fireplaces, outdoor sitting areas for gathering spots, private jacuzzis. Just a great spot to hang out here on the peninsula different real estate that's here for sure. sale to so explain mm -hmm. that to the, the public. Mm -hmm. Well the detached buildings there's villas, casitas and bungalows. The bungalows are part of the hotel uh, but we do have villas and casitas which are for sale product. Uh, the villas and casitas have two different styles really. The casitas have three bedrooms, three baths that are all individually locking bedrooms. So you have the ability to uh, break those up uh, into many different configurations. The villas, the villas uh, stand alone uh, as single units, ranging from about 1,850 to 2,800 square feet. When those ownerships turn over, there's a 1% transfer fee which will go to the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, which will be another, besides the uh, occupancy tax, um, which will be a tremendous uh, revenue estimated at four to six million dollars a year. The, the transfer fee on the ownership of the villas, casitas, and bungalows will also be another revenue stream in addition to sales tax. This is the uh, the main entrance to the uh, resort. We're coming down the road past the villas. You can see where the hotel structure is starting to take shape. Off to the left, this is the wing that has the hotel rooms in it, 360 rooms in that hotel wing. And then there's the lobby that's just being outlined by the steel structure. It is going to be a tremendous entrance experience, entry experience, coming down the portico chair, going in through 
big, large, open archways, high ceilings, just a very dramatic first impression when you come to Terranea Resort. And then beyond the view to the ocean and Catalina, just spectacular. We call it the big four. That would be the spas, the restaurant, the, our um, banquet space and our meeting space is really beautiful. And then of course, just all of the outdoors, the lawns, the hiking trails. We think that whether you're just passively enjoying the resort or you are actively enjoying the resort, there'll be many things. Um, I think that the spa, my favorite, uh, will be um, very, very exciting. We have 24 treatment rooms, all with ocean views. Now explain the occupancy, how this mm -hmm. is all working, because you're a full owner, but you have partial occupancy, right? That's right. It's condominium, whole ownership, full ownership of villas and casitas. But as you know, this is a very special place, one of the last remaining developable coastal locations in Southern California. And with that, uh, you bring in the California Coastal Commission, the city of Rancho Palos Verdes and their oversight and how this should be developed and how it should be utilized. We at uh, Terranea want to make sure that we maintain that visitor serving aspect of it. So you take all of those things, you roll them together and you come up with an ownership profile that's a little bit different. And what it is is an, a whole ownership, but you're limited in the amount of time that you can use it per year. And then when you're not using it, it's mandatory that you make it available for rental. And what this does is allow you the pride of ownership, but also make sure that the public serving aspect is maintained and that the public continues to have the opportunity to use and enjoy this beautiful spot. The casitas are 60 days per year, no more than 29 at any one stretch, and the villas are 90 days per year, again with just uh, 29 days at any one time. I've personally been working on Terranea for over 10 years, and so when it opens it will have been roughly half of my career I've been working on the project. So in one sense, it's going to be a huge relief to have it finally opened. Um, but then also, you know, one of the neat things about the business that we're in is when we open a property, uh, being able to watch all of our guests come and really enjoy themselves. Uh, it's, it's, it provides a lot of meaning to what we do and makes that end goal very special. When, when we started the company, uh, 36 years ago now, uh, we set some, we didn't have a specific game plan on what the company would be like 35 years later, but we did set some real goals and some principles, some core values which we have followed. One of those core values is attracting great people to the company, giving them the empowerment then to do the right thing. So we really have a great collegial kind of environment within the firm. I think that the most important thing about our company is that every property is unique to the environment in which they are located. As we're seeing here at Terranea, we have offerings that are so unique because of our location. We have a property right outside of Phoenix, which is called the Royal Palms, and it is absolutely a beautiful property. It has gardens and, and very lush, lush grounds, a beautiful world-class spa, and it's a great respite for people right there in the Phoenix area. It's a beautiful property. We have Miramonte Resort, which is in the desert by Palm Springs. Beautiful property, large convention property, hosts um, numerous weddings and events that happen over in the desert. And it too has this very unique feel of a resort within a meeting properties um, location. So it's really quite lovely. And we have properties all over um, the U.S. and we're very proud because each one is unique to, and very authentic to the area in which they're located. And, and what, one of the unique things about uh, our company in particular is that we're both developer and hotel manager and most companies that are in our business don't do both of those simultaneously so it gives us a very different perspective uh, as a developer we have much more of a long-term view because we just don't develop and leave. Um, but then as an operator, we also uh, have the perspective of coming at a project in a unique, customized, and special way. So I think it makes a, uh, a great combination. We today manage about 35 hotels and resorts around the country, about 8,000 uh, hotel rooms, all full service, higher quality, 
we are particularly strong or specialized, uh, albeit a sweet spot, uh, in high quality, full service, independently positioned properties that are in a position in the marketplace where they don't need to carry a brand or be part of a larger brand organization. Terranea obviously fits that uh, with its remarkable site in this world-class community, and so we couldn't be more, more excited about all that. Well, I have to say, Dan, I was here with you last week, and uh, this was not stuccoed, and now we've, uh, it's all coming together at this particular casita. Yeah. Every day uh, you see something new. Now you're starting to see some of the exterior finishing touches being put in place, some of the detail work. Uh, this is the color code of the stucco that's going on, and the color will vary throughout the resort. The patina will change, and, and the design, the hope is that it will appear to be uh, a Mediterranean estate that was developed over a hundred years and different pieces kind of were built along the way. So it'll have different varying colors and techniques and textures. Uh, this is a casita. There's uh, four units in this structure, two up and two down. They're all three bedroom, three bath, 2,040 square feet. Each bedroom in the casitas is individually locking, which means that as an owner, you can rent out just a guest bedroom or the master suite in one of the guest bedrooms. You have a lot of flexibility in how you put that out there on the market for others to enjoy. But the casitas starting to take shape and they're absolutely beautiful. We're actually looking out over the what will become the adult pool. This terrace down here will be transformed into a beautiful adult pool, family pool, looking out over the adult pool, and then of course the ocean beyond. This trail, which will connect to the public trails that are adjacent to Terranea Resort, will take you down to what we call the cove. And it's in the cove that we plan to create a beautiful beach environment that will just be spectacular. And I have to believe, sitting down there in the sand with the sun on your face, it's going to be very hard to realize that just over the hill are about, I don't know, what, 15 million people in Los Angeles? It's the ultimate escape, and yet just minutes away from downtown LA. And down in this pool area, will there be uh, dining opportunities as well or a snack bar? That's right. Along the path that will take you down, there will be concessions and, and food opportunities um, so you can stay refreshed and uh, hydrated regardless of where you are on Terranea Resort. That the community is part of what we're doing here. They've embraced us. They've welcomed us into the community. So we've given careful consideration to the naming of our ballrooms, the naming of our restaurants, to be respectful to the history in which we are going to play a part for a very long time. Liz, I want to take you down what will become the 140-foot water slide. I'm going to wait for this uh, grab all to come by, but then I'm going to take you down the slide. You, Liz, will be one of the first people to actually go down the slide. Now, we're missing the water. And you're missing my bathing suit. And we're missing your bathing suit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but we are going to go down what's going to be a 140-foot slide. So here we go. You ready? Here we go. We're going down the slide. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> the experience will be a little different when we're open. But now we're splashing in the pool. This is the family pool. 5,000 square feet, and around us, decking and cabanas and deck chairs. If you look back over to our right, this is where the pool bar will be over here. And then in the corner, this is our all-day dining, or what we would call a three-meal restaurant in the hotel business, breakfast, lunch, and dinner with indoor and outdoor seating. This is going to be a great spot to sit and enjoy the sunshine and look out at the beautiful view beyond. It's a bit obstructed at the moment, but we'll look out over yet another swimming pool, and then, of course, that big pool out there called the Pacific Ocean. Now, you mentioned this being the family pool, and you really are focusing on making this a family destination as well. There are kids' programs here. We have the Kids Club. There's going to be, uh, within our golf, uh, many opportunities for families to get together, be together, play together. Um, so. There are many aspects of this resort that are totally focused on providing opportunities for families to return to each other. You know, I've got uh, 
a boss, a mentor, and a father all wrapped up in one person. So it makes my life very efficient. I only have to make one call when I have a problem. Yeah. Um, no, it's great because I have somebody that uh, is around me all the time that I can completely trust 100%. And he's got you know not only the best interest of our business in his mind, but he's also got my best interest in his mind also. So I feel very lucky. and. Uh, it's a terrific way to go about life. Yeah. Well, Low Enterprise is first divided into kind of three operating groups. We have our commercial real estate group. Uh, we have a hospitality group, which is obviously dealing with Terranea. And then we have our investment group. Uh, I have a son, uh, Mike Lowe, who runs our commercial real estate group. And Rob Lowe, as you mentioned, uh, runs a hospitality group. Those three groups work uh, somewhat independently, but then they work very closely together through our investment division. Uh, we're adding 13 acres of native habitat that were not on the peninsula before to this property. That will be terrific for the native species around here, particularly the couple that are endangered. Uh, we've got a two and a half acre park that all the citizens will 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 use hopefully. Uh, actually, only 25 percent of the property will have impervious surfaces on it. So that leaves the remaining 75% as essentially green space. So we believe it's very low density. Uh, we've also done some other important things. Our uh, stormwater management system has two primarily, primary elements to it, a water filter system and a bioswale system. And that cleans the majority of the water that comes on our property. Actually, 75% of that is generated from off-site use, not just for our own property. So I think we've done quite a few things to uh, make sure that the, 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 the project is an enhancement to the local native environment rather mm -hmm. than a detractor. You've got those trees remaining from marine land, you're yeah, using the rock here. I mean, I'm really 45 impressed. 45 of those old trees that we <laughs> boxed up and are uh, in a nursery over there getting ready to replant it. Well, after being out in the beautiful sunshine, we need to take a little break here in the shade. I'm with Dan, surrounded by some amazing trees. These trees are about 50 years old. They were planted by marine land, and we were able to salvage them. You can see they've all been boxed and numbered, and there's plans for these trees. They're going to go back here on the site at Terranea Resort and, and pay tribute to the wonderful history of this spot. They're thriving and uh, beautiful trees. Well, we got about two miles of trails here on the resort and about 13 acres of what we call a coastal preserve. And that's where we've removed all of the non-native species. And you can see they started to replant the indigenous plants back into the site. The drip system in place. I mean, obviously, it's got to grow in a little bit. But there's going to be 13 acres of land that is dedicated to propagating just the native species of this peninsula. And it's going to be absolutely beautiful. And as we approach up to the point over yonder, um, we were out there last week. That area is going to have seating and whatnot for the people to take a spot to rest. Or what's Natural going? rock seating, and then there'll be some other uh, fit and finish areas as well. Why don't we go take a look? It's a great spot to see Point Vicente. All right. Dan, it doesn't get any better than this. Being <laughs> here at this point on a gorgeous sunny day, we just need a few whales breaching behind us, and it all comes together. I have one whale scheduled <laughs> any any minute now, so he should be up. Now, you know, I'm here every day, and you never get tired of this view. And the weather is so consistently nice here. It's a beautiful spot. And this is just one of the stopping areas along our two miles of trails that are on Terranea Resort. Of course, you've got the lighthouse view on this direction and the coastline up the way, and just all the hustle and bustle of Terranea coming together. Very, very exciting for you. This is going to be a great spot to get away from the hustle and bustle, to come out and really relax and enjoy this view and some time together with family and friends. All right. What time is that whale coming back? Uh, any minute. <laughs> All right. Well, our club car tour here at Terranea is coming to an end. Uh, we're climbing back up Terranea Way to the entrance. Uh, it was a fantastic time working with you, Dan. I know you're busy. you got a lot going on. It was our pleasure. Come back anytime, Liz. We'll be back, and I'm not going to forget that I'm going to be one of the first to go down that slide. <laughs> Every time we open a new project and I stand and watch those first visitors come and thoroughly enjoy what we have created, it's, it's always an excitement. We want to be the neighbor that people just want to stop in, say hello, feel comfortable, enjoy a quiet sunset. Um, we want to be 
that for Trump this community. Trump and, and Terranea Resort will work very well together. I think we complement each other in very many ways. Uh, the golf, for instance, there's a championship golf course. Ours, a nine-hole course where you can sharpen your game. You can also spend a family time out there playing with the kids and the grandkids. You know, it was amazing to me when I first moved to Los Angeles that in the second largest city in the U.S. that there is no oceanfront destination resort. It, it does not exist. Um, what we're building here is something that's long overdue for Los Angeles County, for the West Coast. And everyone that we talk to expresses great desire to get this open and get operating because they want to utilize whether it be the amenities or the rooms. Uh, I have no doubt in my mind that this is going to be very successful. Once the resort is here, it will be unnatural for people to want to come out here because you're, you're surrounded by 10 million people, but uh, you feel like you're in a different world. We just look forward to the Peninsula residents uh, viewing this as their home away from home. Uh, we look forward to them using our, our wonderful restaurants, our spa, uh, our meeting rooms, having their friends and visitors uh, stay with the hotel. We very much want them to, uh, to view Terranea as just an expansion of their community. We would like to see it develop uh, as quickly as possible, uh, not, and, and not for any other reason than, than the enjoyment of the community. Uh, and by the way, there is, there is going to be um, l uh, some significant revenues that will inure to the benefit of the community due to the um, um, uh, taxes that will be related to it. That again will be plowed back into the community to, for the benefit of all. Well, they say Rome wasn't built in a day, and when it comes to Terranea, again, this project has been nearly a decade in the making, but if all goes as planned, this resort will open by next summer. That's going to do it for this edition of Community Connection on Location. I'm Liz Brown-Swanson. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you.